if someone would like to make a treat to share, they can. We will sit out front, so if we do happen to see some passers-by that would like to stop and see what's going on, they're more than welcome to join us. And as we used to do, we just have a couple of coffee tables and a chance to sit, and hopefully by 11 o'clock in the morning, the way the weather's been lately, uh, it will be nicer and we'll be able to actually enjoy a sunny day out in front of the church. And the church actually was just repaired out front this past week uh, by Brent, which looks great. I know I, I was here one of the days that he was working out there. We're, we're, oh my goodness, that man can see a hard day's work. I saw him out there power washing, and I went out at one point, and I thought, where is he? He was overworking on the other side of the road. He, he, said, he, he said he cleaned up both sides of the road. Oh, I know. Anyway, yeah. Yes. And I, I thought, wasn't he working up here? But anyway, lovely, yeah. lovely yeah. job. Anyway. You can see now, if you haven't been here lately, some of our bricks were not uh, level, and it was a bit of a tripping hazard. So things have been repaired, and things are much better out front, which is great. Um, it is strawberry season, and as tradition here at our church, we have tried our best to entertain the idea of a strawberry social every year we could. It's been sad that the last two years we haven't been able to do that, but we are bringing it back on Saturday the 25th, uh, from 11 to 1. Everything will be outside. Um, we will be having strawberry shortcake of some kind. No ice cream, probably but fruit instead. Uh, we'll be doing it in a much smaller scale, but there will be strawberry, strawberries to, to eat, and there'll be baking. If you'd like to participate in baking some of the baking, please do. Uh, we just ask that all the baking is here by the Friday if possible, and Diane and Karen will be instrumental in being here for pickup. Is there a time already set, Diane? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay, we'll let you know what time if you'd like to drop off bacon. And then our market ideas, uh, items that are for sale, if you go onto our website, those items we're going to try to also have them available at the market so that things will be up for sale that you haven't actually physically been able to see up until now. So keep that date in mind. 11 to the 1 is the actual day, but we are certainly looking for some bakers. It doesn't have to be strawberry related, but it could be. Completely up to you. And I think there was one more thing that I wanted to say, but no, I guess that's probably it. Yeah, that's it for now. Um, a few people are away, I know, today. I think Diane or Karen's off preaching somewhere else, and we'll have them back a bit more regularly as the summer months come. But uh, the student in her has been, has been brought away to somewhere else to share her gifts, so we're happy to be able to do that. Oh, yes, I, I knew there was something else. Thanks, Murray. As everybody's putting up, we are not requiring masks anymore. Vaccination is still required, but if you if you feel more comfortable still having a mask on, by all means wear it. If you feel comfortable not wearing a mask, that is completely up to you. I mean, fortunately or unfortunately, because our numbers are a little bit lower right now as we get closer to the summer months, you can certainly socially distance quite easily in here if that is something that you want to be able to do. And uh, yeah, so I know that some of us are being a little bit more cautious at this end, which is why Beth is still better on at the moment, just for Jennifer's safety. And uh, if you have any concerns or questions about any of this, please just let us know. But that's sort of the, we haven't started fellowship hour back up again. We're just taking this one step at a time for everybody's safety and comfort levels. When you came in, uh, there was the book at the back for any prayer requests. Is there anybody else that would like to be added? Marco? Don Gibson. And somebody else have their hand up? No? Oh, I guess I Okay. All right. This is a very special Sunday. This is Pentecost Sunday. It is Anniversary Sunday. But what comes to mind first for me is the gathering of people in an upper room. They say 120 that have been up there. All these people together in one place probably wondering what was going to happen, or maybe not wondering at all, when all of a sudden, a gust of wind and tongues of fire came and landed on them. And so may that presence, the Spirit's presence, be with us during this time of worship this morning, on this day of Pentecost. Let us pray.
God of wind and fire, give us courage on this day to receive your power. Help us to proclaim the wondrous things that you have done and continue to do in our lives. Give us strength and determination to share the good news of your love and your presence. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are a group of the young at heart today, which is great. And if you are looking at your bulletins, you're going to notice we've got, I've got a piece like a river, which I'm sorry, but you cannot do this sitting down. <laughs> so if we all can stand as we are able, and we'll, we'll what are we doing with Jennifer? Uh, peace like a river, joy like a mountain, love like the ocean. That's uh, it. All right. So I can even stand right here and not leave this. So stand as active as you like. Sending are doing par where they 
are authorized an amount to come out of their account every week. They send e-transfers in. They might drop off their checks. They go through Canada Helps. We've made it lots of different ways of giving so that we can continue to, to do the ministry that we're all so passionate about here at Heritage United Church and to be able to continue to reach out to the, to the country, the city, the neighborhoods, the world around us. And so let us remember the blessings that we can each share, whether they be our time, talents, or monetary offerings now as our offering tree piece is played, which I would love that our singers here sing for us.
God, we are poor in spirit, and though we often pretend that we can make it on our own, we need you. We lift to you our need and the needs of all the world. We need your love around us. We need you to lift us when we stumble and fall. We need you behind us, prodding and nudging us. We need you ahead of us, guiding our way. This morning, we pray for the people of the Ukraine who continue to deal with ongoing threats to their lives. For the thousands of people in Saudi Arabia and Iraq who dealt with the windstorm, sending many to hospital. For the people of Mexico and Brazil who have lived through hurricane winds. May we feel you wish with them and with all your people, filling our bodies and hearts with your presence. God of green leaves and blossoms, we praise you in the midst of your wonder-filled creation. We thank you for the love that guides us into learning and growth. God of the broken branch and ravaged forest, we pray for those who are denied opportunities for growth, the exploited and marginalized. God of the firm root, we pray for ourselves as we seek to grow in response to your call to mission in the world. This morning we pray especially for these people who need an extra measure of your healing spirit. As we pray for Alice and Gail, for the Baker family, for Anne and Daryl Keynes, for Matt, for Don Gibson, for Lynn Connell, for Pat Barber, for Myrna Burkholder, for, Ma for Michaela Yesis, for Ellen Jones, for Bob and Marilyn Palmer, for John Seagram, and Bob and Abel Watts. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Enter our lives, free us from all fear. Give us strength to carry on. Give us hope and joy sufficient for each day. Give us power to be the church. Impart your many gifts to our members that we may be the body of Christ's presence in this world. Free us from all fear and renew us in our life together. All this we pray as we pray together the words that Jesus gave us, reminding us that we are binded together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And at this time, I'm inviting Mary to come on up, and she's going to be sharing our reading with us. I'm assuming you're not ready to do easy to allow I just thought of that. Right. Aaron is Judaism, 
threatens and errors. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amazing reader, such an amazing reader. Thank you for sharing that. It's amazing the, the, the names of towns they come up with back in the day, and uh, to expect people to actually be able to remember them and pronounce them as something. And so now we come to a, another reading from the Gospel of John. This is a, referred to as a reading about the spirit of truth, a little different from what we've just heard in the book of Acts, chapter 14, verses 8 to 17. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You believe when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You ask, may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. God bless these readings from our scriptures this morning. I invite you to please stand as you're able. Let us sing together. I feel the winds of God. Number 625 in our hymnal.
of the air around us is invisible, and we don't even notice it. We walk through the air as if there was nothing there. So when a gust of wind comes up, it's a surprise. To imagine wind having power to destroy towns, well, it seems kind of like science fiction. Or that air can rip houses apart seems really incredible. But hearing some of the stories makes it real. We only have to remember back just a few short weeks ago when the devastating storm ripped through Ontario and Environment Canada said that it had been involved in Derrico, a rare widespread windstorm that is associated with a line of thunderstorms. You know, the storm toppled down trees, power lines, and caused extensive damage to properties as it developed near Sarnia and moved northeastward across the province and into Quebec. When it was done, there were tens of thousands in Ontario left without power for days. Residents in some areas were asked to avoid unnecessary travel to make it easier for emergency services to respond to calls for assistance and to remove the downed trees and repair power lines. Some areas, including the community of, of Uxbridge, which is a home to some of our very own precious members, declared a state of emergency. I was out last when all of this happened, but I watched for news and updates from, from some of, of you through social media. My prayers were all with you during this time, that each of you were safe. Absolutely. We live in complex and confusing times. People have been undergoing enormous changes and crises in their lives over these past two years. There have been health and financial struggles, mental health concerns, and for some most recently, the stress and anxiety associated with where they were going to live while their home was being rebuilt or repaired following the storm that swept through. It is during these difficult and confusing times that we need a helper from heaven. Today, we celebrate Pentecost. It is one of my favorite Christian festivals because it celebrates that we have access to the helper that Jesus called the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God that is alive and is at work in us and in the world around us. The key is to always remember that we have not been abandoned this world and left to our own devices during times of unrest and certainly difficulty. But, but what is Pentecost? And where did it originate? And what is its meaning for us today? Let me give you just a little bit of background on it. The disciples had gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Weeks. It was the annual time to recognize the spring barley harvest celebrated 50 days after Passover. The word Pentecost comes from the Latin pente, meaning five. Jewish people would come from great distances to gather in Jerusalem for the festival. In our current time, we would see Jewish folks coming from as far away as Italy in the west, as far east as Iraq, as far south as Saudi Arabia and Egypt, and as far north as Turkey. All of these Jewish people from this vast geographical area have gathered in Jerusalem. Luke, as the author and the storyteller of books of Acts, is trying to tell us that these, this is an incredibly diverse and international gathering of people representing many locations speaking a variety of languages and comprising various nationalities and cultures. This is the Middle East gathered together in Jerusalem. Among this great gathering of people from all over the known world are the 11 disciples of Jesus. The disciples have been reduced to 11 because Judas has died. They have just decided to replace Judas and have cast lots, or probably pulled straws, between Justus and Matthias. Matthias was the one who pulled the short straw, so it was determined that he was the chosen one, pointed by God, to be the replacement of Judas. The disciples are now sitting in a room with, they say, about 120. 
20 other followers of Jesus. And then something extraordinary happens. They all undergo an incredibly collective experience in which a powerful gust of wind sweeps in and they witness tongues of fire on each other's heads. What is truly astounding is that everyone begins to share with one another in different language, languages than their own their experience of God. Everyone understands what is being said, and there is a profound experience of wonder and unity in the room. At first, witnesses of this extraordinary event, assumed by the laughter and dis disneyness of this wonderful event that these people must be filled with alcohol. But the disciples, Peter the Rock, upon which Jesus said he would build his church, tells the witnesses, we are not drunk. It is only 9 a.m. Then Peter goes on to interpret the meaning of this experience. He explains that this must be what the prophet Joel meant when he had prophesied that in the last days there will be a pouring out of God's spirit on all flesh, even upon slaves and old men would have visions and young men would dream dreams. After hearing all, hearing all of this, and if we continued reading just a little bit further in the book of Acts, we would have heard a question asked by the people. What should we do? To which Peter replied, love one another as God loves you. Change your ways, be baptized, be washed clean and made new. Receive the Holy Spirit. Say and do what Jesus said and did. God's promises for you, for your children, and for everyone God calls. How many of you recall the royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle? Like many of you, I watched the, this grand day for sure. Watch as it played out. American Bishop Michael Curry shared this sermon at the wedding, which I was reminded of this past week as I was reflecting on the scripture passage. He talked about how when fire was discovered, it changed the world. The harvesting of fire was one of the great scientific and technological discoveries of all of human history. Fire, to a great extent, made human civilization possible, he said. He then went on to say that love has the same power. The power of love has the potential to be the next world-changing energy as fire was in its time. And he described love and its power this way in his sermon. Love is not selfish and self-centered. Love can be sacrificial and in doing so becomes redemptive. And that way of unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive love changes lives. And it can change this world. And if you don't believe me, just stop and imagine. Think and imagine a world where love is the way. Imagine how homes and families where love is the way. Imagine neighborhoods and communities where love is the way. Imagine governments and nations where love is the way. Imagine business and commerce where love is the way. Imagine this tired old world where love is the way. When love is the way, unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive. When love is the way, there is no child who will go to bed hungry in this world ever again. When love is the way, we will let justice roll down like a mighty stream and righteousness like an ever-flowing brook. When love is the way, poverty will become history. When love is the way, the earth will be a sanctuary. When love is the way, we will lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside to study war no more. When love is the way, there's plenty of good room Plenty good room for all of God's children. Because when love is the way, we actually treat each other well. Like we are actually family. When love is the way, we know that God is the source of us all. And we are brothers and sisters, children of God. My brothers and sisters, 
That's a new heaven, a new earth, a new world, a new human family. Bishop Curry's sermon not only interrupted what till then, in spite of the presence of the bride herself, who was biracial American, was a rather typical royal wedding with all of its nobility and fascinators and lovely music. It interrupted our world, reminding us that not only was this wedding something special, but that love, God's love, is something special as well. Bishop Curry offered us hope in the midst of our difficult times and problematic culture and proclaimed to us the love that is the heart of the universe, at the heart of God, the love that has the power to transform our world. We see the power of that love on display on this feast day, the Feast of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit poured out this on the disciples who were gathered together, transforming them into these powerful messengers and preachers of, the God, of God, the news that God, Jesus had shared with them. The Gospel reading that we heard also gives us a slightly different perspective on the Spirit's role and power. And instead of, of a rushing wind and tongues of fire, here we see something quite different. The Spirit is called an advocate. The Spirit is an advocate who will testify on behalf of Jesus after his departure from his disciples. And one important aspect of this work is to continue to teach the disciples and those who follow after them, the beloved community, in fact, Jesus says in rather a startling way, it's actually to your advantage I go away. Because if I go away, I will send this advocate to you. And the advocate, the comforter, will lead them, lead us into the truth. I believe that Pentecost happens every time that barriers and misunderstandings are burned and blown away, and new understanding peace and unity come. Pentecost happens when families that have been divided seek reconciliation, when couples see the perspective of the other, when churches that have been conflicted find a way to live together in their respective differences and work together toward a common good, when communities strive to live with respect for all people, when the world learns to celebrate and embrace diversity instead of being afraid of it. At that first Pentecost, Jewish people from all over the world discovered that they held more in common than they realized. This is why we pray for the coming of the Spirit to descend upon us again and again and again. The presence of the Spirit changes everything and makes it new. It is that spirit that will accompany each of us through both the joys and the trials of life. The world now has its dangers, its difficult places, and countless challenges, and for some, a very uncertain future. In such a context, cynicism, anger, and fear are appropriate and even understandable. The temptation is to close in around oneself and one's loved ones, can be overwhelming. The common desire to seek what is best for oneself and one's family and ignore the problems of the world beyond one's doors or one's neighborhood. Yet, remembering Bishop Curry's and his message, he envisioned a world animated and shaped by love. And he invited us to imagine a world where love is the way. And so may the Holy Spirit inspire us to know God's love, to share God's love and to imagine and bring into a being a world where God's love truly is the way. Even though we remain scattered over the face of the earth and speak many different languages, the Spirit brings us together. The language of love and compassion speaks to all and joins us all. As God's Spirit breathes into us and we join one another in love, the world is brought closer to living as a community of God. May we help make that so as we live out the love that was shared first with us. Let us pray. God is at that first Pentecost 
We ask that you bring this power to us once again. Let your Holy Spirit fill us as individuals and churches that we may be empowered anew to become your instruments of healing, hope, love, and transformation in a world of desperate need. Bind our faith and works together in a new wholeness so that we may make a profound difference and bring glory to your holy name. Amen. And at this time, we are going to be sharing together in our sacrament of Holy Communion. And for those of you who are at home, I invite you now to, to pause the service if you haven't noticed beforehand that we will be celebrating to get your bread and your juice or your crackers so that you too can be part of our gathering around the table for this celebration. We come to the table. We invite God to be part of us. All of us breaking bread together. We prepare to remember Jesus. All of us touched by the Spirit of the truth. We hope to be empowered by our feast, all of us with hearts burning inside like the flame of Pentecost. O God of creation, whose spirit stilled the waters of chaos, whose breath filled all creatures with life, we praise you. O God of inspiration, whose spirit anointed kings and priests, whose power emboldened the prophets of old, we praise you. O God of Pentecost, whose spirit came to the faithful waiting at Jerusalem, whose gifts empowered the church for service and witness. We praise you. O God of Jesus Christ, whose spirit descended dove-like on a man of Galilee, whose glory shone in words of wisdom and deeds of love. We praise you. We give thanks for his vision, his healing, and his holy compassion. We give thanks for his life, his death, and his resurrection. Here now, as we gather at the table to which Jesus calls us, we remember another table long ago and far away. We remember the night when Jesus and his disciples had been together for their last meal together. And Jesus took a loaf of bread. He gave thanks and broke it. And he looked to each of his disciples and he said, Take and eat. And each time you do, do so in remembrance of me. And as the meal continued and a little while later on, Jesus took a cup. He poured juice or wine into it. And again, he looked around to his disciples and he said, Take drink. This is the new covenant poured out for each of you in love. Each time you drink, remember me. And so God of cross, of empty tomb and banquets, we eat and drink and remember, giving thanks for the love Jesus poured out on all who he met. Transforming God, you call us to share the banquet of faith with longtime friends and new acquaintances. Pour out your spirit on this table of these people. May the presence of the spirit make this meal an occasion of transformation for we who gather to eat it together. Amen. And so at this time, as our music is being played, I know that each of you have received a copy of your as you came in. I invite you to open it, get it ready, and we will share together once the music is finished.
The meal is now ready, and so we let us share together. And as we do, we can do this together at home as well as here in our congregation. The bread of life broken for you. The cup of salvation poured out for you.
to end, to celebrate the birthday of the church as we gather in this place, remembering those first that went before us. And so let us share together in our benediction as printed in your bulletins. God of fire and beauty, warm us. God of peace and justice, preserve us. God of wind and wonder, amaze us. God of Pentecost, King of our love in our hearts. And now may the blessing of God, giver of every good and perfect gift, the blessing of Christ, the Redeemer of the lost and broken, the blessing of the Holy Spirit, God's presence in our lives, be with each one of us and all who love and serve. Amen. Amen.